Hey, everybody. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Listen, I'm a little tired. And welcome back to another episode of the Free Rotation Podcast. I'm joined with my fellow compatriots, uh, Chris. Hola. Uh, Bebe. My butthole hurts. And and hopefully you're not your butthole doesn't hurt Angie. Angie? <laughs> Say it hurts. Say it hurts. It hurts. Ha, ah, yes. <laughs> I win. I don't. Oh, God. This is life. This is Bobby. How is this what I've chosen? I know. How is this my life? How is this my desire? This is my role in the podcast. Becky looks so hopeful. Please don't say your butt hurts. I know. You know we'll we'll, we'll, we double team. Just the defeat in our eyes. Uh, You know, you would think that we were talking about buttholes today, and we're not. I wish. It is Pride Month. It is. Okay. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) I like how you just relate anything back to your butthole with anything going on. It's Pride Month. There was a tsunami. It's it's Pride Month. It's Pride Month. Yeah. It's Tuesday. It's, it's Tuesday. Pride Month. It's my butthole. Um, speaking of not buttholes, um, today's episode is a it's a very generic, very informational, educational topic regarding lakes, specifically Lake Lanier in Georgia. And if you're wondering why we're talking about it, it's because it's considered the deadliest lake in the world. Yeah, De- man-made lake. Correct? Deadliest man-made, man-made lake. lake. Yeah, and not even remotely close either. No. What do you mean? Like, compared to other lakes, how many people have died at Lake Oh, Lanier? yeah. This place, like, you you know, we live in it. We all have lived in Georgia most of our lives. And most of the time during the summer, it's not uncommon on the news to hear somebody has drowned in Lake Lanier. It kind of becomes just part of, like, the summer life that somebody has just drowned. And it's not even, like, when they say not uncommon, they're talking, like, two or three times a week. Like, yeah. It is super yeah. common. Like, so, oh, there's another one. So it's funny. Boating accidents. Yeah. Oh, it suddenly ran into something not there. Yeah. yeah. I remember when Julio Jones lost his ring in the uh, Lake Lanier. That was a big deal. So it's just weird. Like, we've grown up hearing about it, so you don't really think about it until you start, like, going on social media and watching TV shows that talk about how scary Lake Lanier actually is. <laughs> so since it's the beginning of summer, it's a hot summer day out there. It's disgusting. It's This whole week's been gross. It is. So we are going to get into some reasons why you should not go to Lake Lanier. Ever. Just, I, I literally never w- go to Lake Lanier, and I still won't go now uh, after hearing all of this. I don't go at all. And yeah. I, I go fishing a lot, and we go camping. I don't go Lake Lanier. That no. place is a nightmare. I'm going to bring a cup of Lake Lanier water back and uh, throw it at you. That's, if I suddenly drowned just because you <laughs> threw some water at me, that would, <laughs> that would just be hilarious. And probably the way I would die anyways. But yeah, Or on a curb. So here's, a, so here's some background. It's just basic surface boring facts about Lake Lanier. Is that it actually is a reservoir that was created in the northern part of the state of Georgia. And it was to do flood control for a city of Atlanta in the Chattahoochee River because, you know, back in the day, it was not uncommon for Atlanta to flood really badly during a lot of the rains. The Hooch is a big river, and when we get a lot of rains up north, it even now, even with Lake Lanier being its flood control, basically, technique, Mm -hmm. it still overflows the banks pretty regularly. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, and if you're familiar with reservoirs and dams, you get a lot of hydropower that Mm -hmm. come out of it and, and water. For the city of Atlanta. It's, mm-hmm. it's also drinking. Yep, that was the whole idea, was to control the floods and make a hydroelectric plant that could make electricity and drinking water for Atlanta because mm-hmm. Atlanta was blowing up. So yeah. you're saying I could drink the lake water? Yeah. I can just go up there and sure. drink it. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, sure, go for it. You can drink whatever you want, Bobby. <laughs> On a side note, so what is, that book, The Chill, that we had bought from Barnes & Noble, it's about a reservoir and, like, Basically, it's a supernatural horror book about a reservoir. And when I was researching this and actually reading the book at the same time, it scared the shit out of me. <laughs> like, what happens if the reservoir reservoir breaks and, like, just floods through the entire uh, area? We saw that in Katrina, New Orleans. Yeah. yeah. When the dead. levees break, it's real bad. It's yeah. real bad. That's a yeah. good song by Led Zeppelin, too. Mm-hmm. So, um, it was actually finished in 1956 after the Buford Dam was created. And it was named after Sidney Lanier, who was a poet and wrote uh, what he called was the best poem called The Song of the Chattahoochee. Never heard of it. So it's it's actually kind of ironic because he wrote Song of Chattahoochee and he thought it was like his best work. Mm-hmm. And then he talked about the counties that are, are in the, the areas that are currently under Lake Lanier when he wrote about yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. where he was from. So, yeah, he was talking about like the, how the towns and stuff it, yeah, around like it were Bartow thriving. County and yeah, all. And I mean, it does cover about four different counties um, throughout, the, or five actually, you're right. It's five counties that this it basically controls the water for a lot of these yeah. Cities yeah. and populate populous Everywhere areas. south of Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> like, 
Mm -hmm. So that's just to give you kind of an idea of how big Lake Lanier actually yeah. is. It's huge. Well, and it started being built in the 50s by the Army Corps of Engineers. So to put in perspective, it took six years mm -hmm. to really uh, dig it out. About a year and a half to fill up. Yeah, it was it was a giant project. And it was like, at the time, they were thinking it was going to be a money sink because of how difficult it was to fill it up. And you, in your eye, like theoretically how building these lakes work, you think that they're going to work one way and then you always run into some sort of problem. I remember like a uh, little lake uh, nearby Peachtree. Yeah. It took yeah. forever, that mm -hmm. shit. But yeah. when, when they uh, actually got done with where Lanier is, they said it took somewhere between three and a half to five years to fill two capacity. Yeah. With the hooch flowing into it. Because it's still the Chattahoochee that flows yeah. into yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. One of the biggest river, uh, river systems in the south Still took somewhere three and a half to five years to fill it to capacity. And, and they also had another dam and reservoir that they poured into it. Yeah. So this is put in perspective how big this lake is. 26 miles long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like 113 billion. Jeez. Like you really can go through like five different counties just oh, yeah, on huge. a boat. Yeah. It's like 45 miles deep and yeah. it's like shallow. Yeah. I'm glad he told me how they did it because I was just imagining people just fucking fuck. It's just like, eh, it's going to take a while. Yeah, I mean, 45 that... feet, not miles. <laughs> 45 miles. That is a deep ass I'm lake. That would be. Hold up, hold that's up. like that Mariana's Trench level say, shit. Like, hold up. Something doesn't sound right. You're going to see on. some big ass catfish coming at you. Well, that is the thing. It is there the thing. But that would. Yeah. That's right. what I'm saying. But that's how you get the giant catfish is they like are swimming up from the Atlantic Ocean because it's 46 miles deep. <laughs> That'd be dope. Or it's where King Kong Hollow Earth is located. So, <laughs> saltwater cats don't make it in the lake when you're just throw that out there for you. Yeah, we're not being serious. Fucking fake news over here, Becky. Get Sorry. Your just lying. <laughs> but, lying. Jesus. <laughs> the thing is, like, when you find out, so it was a man-made lake, a lot of what ended up happening is that they actually, like, on surface level, the way it's understood is that they bought out these communities that lived or resided in the area, but there's... There's some dark backstory to that. Yeah, well, yeah. they claimed eminent domain, but you still have to buy the land. Yeah, you gotta pay the money. And th this land had been in these people's ownership for generations. So they didn't want to really let go of it. So you can imagine the strong arming that, well, that, and these are, that went into this. Yeah. You've got to think these are... This was a part of rural Georgia. Yeah. And these are people mm -hmm. that have farms. Like that's, These were mostly... This is all they this have. a farm community. It's, yeah. the, it's the lowlands of a river basin. Mm -hmm. It's a farming community, and they've been yeah. doing this forever. So maybe not the most educated, but really tough, hardworking people. Like, mm -hmm. they, you the, have to be to survive that. Yeah. And to put in perspective, the uh, first guy that sold was a 90-year-old farmer. And uh, he sold 100 acres for about $5 an acre. Yeah, he ended up with like $4,100 for 100 yeah, him, for 100 and, acres. And uh, today, that's roughly they gave him forty five grand for 100 acres. Yeah. Right? Well, that's with inflation. Like, that's yeah. what they paid him. Yeah. So after they left, they realized, hey, we can't make it in the cities on this. Because yeah, like in rural, you know... Yeah. yeah. Bum fucked Egypt. It's like, well, that, oh, this you is don't a lot even, of money. You hear about like them claiming an eminent domain, but there's also local stories around the area where they just came in and by other government means, like not going mm -hmm. through eminent domain, basically strong armed people yeah. in the cell. Like yeah. Yeah. there out. was no no yeah. selling. Once yeah. they decided this was gonna happen, yeah, you had to. These twenty six miles across of communities, you were leaving one way or the other. And that's <sighs> tough. What was that guy? Oh, we should do an episode about the Killdozer guy. Because that's an interesting story by Eminent Domain right there. Oh, yeah. That's wild. Or even Ted Kaczynski. This was his big issue. Yeah. Was government killing natural yeah. resources. And people just getting so immersed in technology, they refused to look at what's happening around them. Yeah. Well, Harsh opinion. Kaczynski was right. Yeah. He it's, was right. It's scary, but... It, well, it is. He went about, you know... The wrong way. The wrong way. Yeah. Yeah. I was about to say, you really... The existence of eminent domain, and we, you know, you debate this in law school when you go to law school, is the fact that it's the exist... It, it's an idea that just exists because the government says it exists. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, I'm the government. Yeah, I'm going to come This is for the good it. of the people. Yes. We're taking it. Right. And I mean, unfortunately, that's the way the court system has ruled that that is something that they can do. But you have a lot of circumstances like under this, un, like for Lake Lanier specifically, like it's not just one little tiny community. There were several communities that were taken over. Hundreds, not yeah. several. Yeah. Hundreds. One, um, one story that there's a lot of stories if you re watch TikTok or um, read online about um, one city called Oscarville, which was a black owned community. Mm -hmm. And part of their reasoning for... I don't know. It's very difficult to kind of decipher if the truth of this or not is the truth. Um, but part of it is that since it was a black owned community, it was strong armed into becoming or selling out because at the time there was such a segregation. Su well, such a belief in like running the blacks yeah. out of, out mm -hmm. of uh, their communities. Here's the thing about Oscarville that is probably little known. Oscarville 
was a site of a huge racist war. Yes. Race war. Because a white woman had been so brutally raped, 18-year-old woman, that they literally beat her eye out of her head. She died, I think, like 17 days after the rape. Right. So they identified, of course, two men. But based on what she was able to tell it, it was not these two men. Yeah. Like f- five minutes of trial, lynched. Right. Well, then this other woman was like, hey, I was raped. Right. You know? So they go out, dig up some more African-American men, lynch them. And then it just becomes a war. They're just going in. I was like, you know what? That's what I know. Into this. We can just get rid of all of this. Right. Let's just put it underwater. Especially the fact that it was later when uh, the lake was being built, it was very clear that these men were not involved in what right. occurred to this rape. And this was a pretty affluent African-American community. It isn't like these were, you know, poor and impoverished people. These right. were educated African-Americans yeah, like who Tulsa. were like, hey, yeah. like it was Forsyth County. So... I mean, that's still a, a pretty decent county. Yeah, right. still legit. And they're like, we want these people out of here. Um, let's eminent domain this. Yeah. So that was a, a big controversy that a lot of people talk about now is the fact that this city, this town existed and part of part of its history was so sh- um, strived in um, race wars and all mm-hmm. of that going on. Um, there were other cities like Castleberry Bot or, or cities, I say towns. Um, like Castleberry Bottom, and then there was actually like in near Gainesville an entire racetrack that existed in this area yeah. that was very popular yeah. for uh, Saturday evening races. Ingleberry was like one of the wealthiest strips of farmland, and um, they had their own dam and reservoir and bridges. Yeah, it, it, actually, these areas were. If you read about these areas prior to Lake Lanier being created. These were fertile lands, yeah. like fertile, well, of like it's the delta, basically. Right. Like, yeah. yeah. It's well, the river basin. They're always fertile. That's why these farms are there. Mm-hmm. But what's funny is that, uh, and to let you know why there are so many <clears throat> problems with Lake Lanier, that racetrack she was talking about, where they used to do Saturday evening races, for years no one knew exactly where it was. Yeah. And then we had a little bit of a drought, and you could start seeing the concrete bleachers poking out of the water. Yeah. Bleachers they said they had removed, yeah. so they wouldn't float to the surface from the yeah. racetrack. Yeah. So it's like, well, we removed anything that could be a boating hazard, anything that floated. Uh, you're a damn liar. Meanwhile, they are. Yeah. in the late 90s, early 2000s, when this drought comes through, people are sitting on the benches. Like, you see pictures of people yeah. at Lake Lanier sitting on these benches that existed um, in the 40s and in 50s. In the 40s and 50s. And, you know, they said they removed, like, uh, there there was a, a main cemetery in Oscarville. They said they removed it. But being the fact that it was a black community, there weren't a lot of marked graves, you know, back in the day. So it's like you couldn't have moved them. And then they're like, well, where did you move them to? Not only that, but well, there's also these... You're dealing with a lot of farmland, so there's a lot of generations of family. That's what I was going to say. Small family cemeteries that if you don't know where they're at and they're not Mm -hmm. marked real well, sorry, it gets flooded. There's a prediction now. Like, they talked about the Oscarville Cemetery and Castleberry Bottom Cemetery and the unmarked graves. But now there's, like, an idea that probably there's hundreds of unmarked graves because a lot of family plots existed where they didn't really mark them. Well, and you also have your your slave plots that would be marked. And then, if this is the Delta of a River... Think about all the generations of Native Americans. Who uh, were oh there. my God, that's what's even scarier to me. Yeah, is like... I mean, you have angered probably a lot of spirits by doing this. Now, question uh, or statement, really? No, it's a question. Like with with the ghost, if if it's haunted, do you think like that? Like, there's like an order. Oh, I'm sure it is. But like, 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 do, like, like the slaves a get hierarchy. To go... Yeah, like, they, 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 since the Native Americans were there the longest, do they get to the fuck up shit first, and then like the slaves? And I then feel like the that would residents? be right. I feel like yeah. that would be right. I think they probably uh, have it parceled out. Yeah, yeah, they pick certain times. I like... really want a movie about that. Like, there needs to be like a movie about like ghost gangs, a ghost gang, <laughs> ghost gang, but like also like it's like how... West Side Story. Are we literally <laughs> getting no. into a caste system of <laughs> yes? No, I, I, no some, not like that. Say, but like. A government almost of like ghosts and like, hey, you get to haunt at this time because you're this old or you died mm-hmm. then. That'd be anyone who would like to haunt together. Let yeah. us know. Yeah. We're yeah, having yeah. an inclusivity yeah. group, so and I want so like, to be like a ton of bureaucracy too. Like, oh, you can't. You gotta <laughs> fucking fill all these ghost forms. It'd be fun. Were you haunting at the bridge at two yeah. a.m. on a Saturday? Like an HOA yeah. system for oh, like ghosting. Oh, please. Like, Ghost, oh, the timeshare, yeah, yes. and the bureaucracy <laughs> aspect of it. Like, come on, bro. That actually, it's not your day. That would be like the worst. Is like you die and you're like, fuck. I'm finally away from like government entities and HOAs. Like, and hey, nope. did you sign up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Like, there's over like there? a club system. It's Beetlejuice like, style. Yeah. Yeah. You have to oh go talk God. to like your handler. Like, oh, what do I do? Uh, well, I will say what the um, poltergeists are like. They're criminals. 
criminals of the ghost world. Well, like, so taking into account the Native American slaves, all that stuff, the the estimate of people who actually ended up leaving these communities was 700, and it was 56,000 acres Jesus that were Christ. taken over. So you can imagine there are a lot of pissed off ghosts, pissed off people, pissed yeah. off. So, like spirit lands. And that's if you also that? probably a really low estimate. Yeah. I doubt they went to like a lot of these African American communities and started counting. Like did no. a proper census. Like, well, in, in they showed up the, get the fuck out. In some of the oral history in these African American yeah, communities, like some of them refused to leave thinking they won't do it if we're still here. Oh, they, they did. did. It. Oh, they still they don't did do it. it. The TVA don't play. Yeah. No. Yeah. With all of this, like working. part of the U.S. Corps of um, Engineers also talked about um, wanting to get a, 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 get this debris out of the water. So there was a lot of like wooden structures and all of that that were removed, but there was a lot of brick and concrete structures structures that were still in existence under Lake Lanier as it was being. Yeah, flooded. they removed like the barns and stuff, things that would float easily. Yeah, and let's not and to put it in perspective, we have to remember this was never intended to be a recreational area. They never intended to have boats or people fishing yeah. or people camping on the property. Yeah. I mean, it brings in a lot of revenue for the state of it Georgia does now. now. Yeah. But then they didn't see long term that people would be doing this. They legit thought, yeah, they never intended Lake Lanier to be a recreational facility. They intended it to be just a reservoir. Right. They didn't expect boats and tubes and camping and floating and fishing and none of that was supposed to happen. Well, if you go and a lot of people have started taking underwater pictures of, there's, there's of scuba stuff, diving. scuba diving, and it is scary. Well, it's just the whole everywhere. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just tires, cities underwater. Yeah, and they've also debris. like found where there's underwater currents because you figure they're going in and out of structures. Like yeah, it the waterways. Yeah. If you go get... in your bathtub and put your foot and then push the water over, you can see how it works. Well, there's also like people like now say they can hear like the sounds of church bells underwater oh, and that's stuff like that. Terrifying. Yeah, yeah, even though there's no like the churches don't have steeples clearly because if it you yeah. know if it was up in the air and you get hit by a boat, that's gonna really you say suck. that, but maybe they've been missed and maybe they're ten feet well, below the surface. If they didn't know where the racetrack was, then yeah, I mean and that's, well, that's pretty big. And that's the thing is like these these are government entities assuring people that these things have been done. But mind this you, was back in the fifties. Also, mind you, twenty people a year drown out there because their boats hit things. Yeah, yeah. It's like they they're supposed to regularly go out and trim the treetops because trees are still growing. Right. <laughs> and it's like the boats will be like, yeah, we got caught on something. But you know what? My favorite scary part of this and it, of course not a favorite not a favorite in like good way most interesting but the people who survived drowning say they feel like hands pulled them under yeah well i was watching some videos on some of the guys that scuba dive lake lanier and they're like yeah it's not it's not really uncommon to be swimming and it's super dark because it's murky oh, yeah. right and you can you. feel like you just reach out and you feel somebody's hand or leg and it's just a dead person's body part and you just like it's just part of lake lanier's bottom yeah. and you're like Cool. Yeah. yeah, part of my thing I put in here is that I, you definitely should take out like the YouTube videos of people scuba diving in Lake Lanier because on the on the surface level of it, if you don't know anything about Lake Lanier, you just think it's a man-made lake, blah, blah, blah. But then you start watching these videos and you're like, oh, this is fucking cre Like we are sitting on top of cities and dead bodies yeah, and yeah. debris yeah. and all it. of this stuff. Well, and, and just this week, a man went missing, presumed drowned. And uh, like two days ago, there was this TikTok that came out from the shore of Lake Lanier. And he's like, I think I might have found that dude. And it's just these feet oh. like under the water, almost at the surface. Oh. And so one of the comments was like, reach in. And he was like, are you fucking nuts? Yeah. <laughs> That's well, how you get like dragged under. Even if you're a strong swimmer, it doesn't matter if there's shit down there you get tangled on. No matter how strong you are, you can't move yeah. concrete and brick right. and rebar yeah. while you're underwater. If you underwater. get stuck in branches underwater, you're done. You're done. You're, you're not dead. getting out. And if you get caught up by one of those currents and sucked into one of those buildings, yeah, you're fighting the current and the pitch black in a building. Right. Like okay. you're in a maze at night. Yeah. Think about your house. You have your front and back door open. When you close your front door or or open one, you'll close the other because yeah. that pressure. Yeah. The, yeah. The wind. So. When you go through a door of a building, think of the pressure you just shut off. Yeah. Now imagine being mm -hmm. underwater in that building in pitch black somewhere you've never been yeah. and fighting a current, trying to find an opening to get back to the yeah. surface. There's no way. You're no. just screwed. I'm going to yeah. sleep so well tonight. Thanks, I guys. know. You're welcome. Well, you know what? Don't go to Lake Lanier. Um, well, <laughs> Problem here, solved. Well, here's the thing. Between like 1994 to, I think the number I had was October 2020, there was over 200 deaths in Lake Lanier. That's not, they, they estimate. That's not counting boating accidents. Well, and I'm not even saying that. They're. They estimate that there have been, since the creation of the lake, over mm -hmm. oh, nearly 700 yeah, deaths. 675 right. is the number. Because we just started yeah. counting in 94 when somebody was like, you know what? 
We There's didn't an awful there. lot of drownings. And here's the thing about those numbers. Those are accounted numbers for the summer months because most people only yeah. really use and Lake Lanier around the summer. And have been found. Yeah. Yes. All these missing people that we never find, you can't say they drowned. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, and they know there are, from the boating accidents, 27 bodies somewhere in Lake Lanier. Yeah. That's just from the strictly from the boating accidents. They knew there was somebody on that boat before. Yes. Yeah. They're not there now. Mm-hmm. That's the number they quote. There's 27 bodies yeah. somewhere in Lake Lanier. Did they have people with them? Could yeah. be more. I mean, that's the thing. It's like that's just the quoted number. There's no mm-hmm. way to tell. Right. Well, and the thing is, I'm, there is a correlation that you can argue that it's because Lake Lanier is such a heavy, heavily populated recreational area well, that it's it happens. Both, though. But do you think about like Lake Alatuna yeah. in comparison to like Lake Lanier, which Alatuna is not as <laughs> populous as Lake Lanier, but you, I mean, I think Lake Lanier is triple the number of deaths. Look compared at West to like like Alatuna. West Point yeah. has people on it 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, year round. Mm-hmm. You don't hear about drowning victims at West Point maybe once no. a year. Maybe, maybe once. once. Literally during the summer months you expect to hear two or three times a week about Lake from Lanier. Lake Lanier. It just yeah. is what it is like. Yep, yeah. yeah, another somebody it's like else drowned dude went Lake missing, presumed drown. Yeah. Yeah. But it's Lake Lanier, huh? Like a guy and his kid like get your fucking kids out of this yeah, water. Don't be in what the are you water. doing, man? But and the thing about the boating accidents that is scary is that a lot of times what happens is what Chris and Angie talked about to begin with is that you suddenly just hit something very large and when they go to investigate what they hit, there's nothing nothing's there. there. There's nothing there. So here and here's the issue with that. It's not I don't think I don't think they're wrong and it could be things that are moving under the water. But it also could be you're having to give a rough estimate of where you hit something in yeah. the yeah, water. Yeah, on the water. And they're scuba diving down. And if it's not within, yeah. and like visibility is legit 10 feet in front of you. Even if it's a, if it's 35 feet away and they swim for an hour and... They may not. They'll yeah. never even see it. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's 30 feet away on the water when you're guessing. Like that's yeah. that's a tight... They were talking too about all the bridges that they supposedly deconstructed. That are not deconstructed. No, they're still there. <laughs> like... And you're like, you did this in six years? You deconstructed all of this and removed? No. They didn't do anything. They they, they basically yeah. measured, is this below the floodplain? It is. Flood it. Flood it. Yeah. yeah. That was their, the Army Corps of Engineers' basic math was, mm-hmm. will this be underwater? Yep. Rock and roll. I'm pretty sure that they did remove the things that would float to the surface to make themselves, yeah, see, we removed it. Well, what's it. cool is if, when you watch some of the scuba diving, scuba diving videos, you see, like, there'll just be a huge mound of, like, cinder block. With, like, wood underneath it where the, it looks like they tried to weigh it down. Yeah. And you're like... Oh, wow. I didn't even realize that. So they didn't even remove what they took down. Yeah. They would just put heavy stuff on top of it. And you're yeah. like, guys... We'll see if this works. I saw see this one scuba years. and they were going down this the streets of this city and the city's still there. Yeah. yeah. Like... Yeah. They... You can... If you scuba dive down far enough and you're able to kind of maneuver it, you can still see the roads and the streets and you could see sort of, like... The buildings and foundations themselves, like you're moving through like a lost civilization almost. Yep. It's really creepy. It's our own version of Atlantis. It's it Atlanta is. Atlanta is. Uh, that's pretty good. Oh, I like this. I like this. But Hot land. That's what we're going to title the episode. Atlanta ish. Atlanta The story of Lake Lanier. Yeah. The I legends like it. of Lake yeah. Lanier. Ooh, yeah, that's like kind of scary. Yeah. Um, well, speaking of legends of Lake Lanier, Becky. Well, I was going to, yeah, I do have that. But I wanted to mention that part of the um, drown people who have nearly drowned, their biggest mention about. At how they've ended up underwater is that they feel like somebody has pulled them down. Like they feel the hands and they feel them. Well, and I wonder how much of that are those conflicting underwater currents. Yeah. Because like if your Mm -hmm. foot hitches like, if you get into like a riptide, it feels like something's dragging you out to sea. Yeah. Because it really is. It's the water itself. Yeah. And you can feel that in the ocean too when you think about how the water feels just even a wave pulling back. Yeah. It feels like something grabbed your ankle. And I wonder about that like how many of them feel that undercurrent, which is basically a riptide through a building or multiple buildings going around something whatever right. they feel it and it feels like it's just dragging you one way all well, of a sudden mm-hmm. and a lot of the reports actually if you look into it a lot of them also mention that these drownings also are tending to occur closer to shore when the waters are calm and many of the the people who have drowned are actually strong swimmers so they would know how to maneuver those currents allegedly lakes are way different you don't expect a rip current in a lake nobody does it's right. not a thing mm-hmm. and just because the top super super Smooth doesn't mean that underwater current isn't yeah. doing something else crazy. So getting into some urban legends, well, that, like still waters run deep. What's under the yeah. waters? Yeah, all well, especially kinds of crazy when you got all that, like you got Atlanta is under there. Yeah, Atlanta is. But okay, so the most famous urban legend involves the lady of the or the lady, lady of the of lake, the la- la- basically lady of the lake. So I had to actually like do some deep oh, yeah. delving into like how the story actually went. It's really scary. So. 
Um, it starts with a car wreck. And mm-hmm. according to a story, there was a Ford sedan carrying two women who had careened off of a bridge in 1958 and tumbled into the lake. So the two women, who were identified as Delia Mae Parker Young and Susie Roberts, were traveling to a local roadhouse when Susie lost control of the car and it went careening off of Lanier Bridge. Yeah, and they have no idea why she lost control. Hashtag women drivers. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Um, yeah. So as she's uh, as they're going, take the wheel. The story is that they actually had like left a gas station without paying for the gas and were speeding off to this like uh, roadhouse to go drinking and stuff like that. So um, as they did lose control, they went creening off of the bridge. Divers could not locate the car or the bodies at the time. They but looked for a long time. It did days. Weeks. But a year later, a fisherman did find the body of a young woman whose body had floated to the surface. Um, but no one could identify her. And what was notable about it was that her hands and some of her toes were missing. Hey, fish fingers, baby. Uh, so here's the thing. You're just rotting meat to fish. Yeah. Well, that's like, what you say is. what you want. Like, <laughs> it, 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 that was the big problem is they couldn't figure out, like, there was no identifiable mark. She would basically have been eaten by, yeah. mm-hmm. like, the they were, nasty stuff under the they were, water. They were hungry, man. You can blame yeah. them. Or, like, imagine she put her hands up to stop herself from going forward. I mean, they could have. Yep. So, in 1990, at the time, they were fixing Lanier Bridge. Um, the lake bed was dredged to fix it when a rusted-out car was located in the lake bed itself. Um, inside, there was a body seated behind the wheel, and after locating personal items inside of the car, the body was identified as Susie Roberts, with many believing the body located in 1955 was Delia Mae Parker Young. There have all been sightings of a woman wearing a blue dress, dubbed the Lady of the Lake, and she wanders through the area with some reports of her stating you cannot see her hands. Yeah, she walks across the bridge of Lake Lanier, like, really confused. Yeah. so it's Probably that, like, where the fuck did the car go? Yeah, many reports Dude, show Dude, where's her, my car? Dude. Uh, they show them on, like, the lake side of, like, where um, the bridge starts and ends. And you see her walking um, back and forth off of the bridge looking for and her And she's car. also been sighted, like, out in, the, um, like, the marsh area of the lake. Mm-hmm. Like, they can see her in the marshes. And if you see her, you're, it's just over for you. It's like a bad omen. Yeah, you're kind of done for. Get the fuck off the lake. Well, there's also a lot of um, theories that the residents actually cursed the area. Like, it was already cursed to begin with. And that these are the, um, this is the reason why you feel people being pulled down well, by hands that you can't yeah, see. I mean, think about it. These are old, like, hillbilly, generational people. They, they know stuff. They have hoodoo. Mm-hmm. Leave them alone. Um, there's also reports of giant-ass catfish. Like ginormously uh, sized catfish. Yeah, like that is size. actually true. Like, yeah. I've seen people noodling. Noodling, for those of you who are not from the South, is basically where you jump in the water fish with your hand. in your bare feet and jam your hand into a big hole and wiggle drag your a catfish fingers. out. Yeah, you wiggle your fingers from they, his hidey hole. They li- they love it and they love hot dogs too. Yeah. So you could just. Oh my so God. as they like latch onto your hand, you just pull them yeah, up. You pull 80, 90, 200 pound catfish out. Yeah. The big ass catfish fry. The, they're, pro- they're pretty much unedible. Uh, yeah, like they're uh, like. Uh, nuclear like radioactive well, catfish not that but they're just so they're bottom feeders so yeah. once they get when so they're that big, big they they're take disgusting on that, that yeah. flavor of like all this decaying stuff yeah so you don't eat it. yeah and it, i mean it really could make you sick i don't think i'd That's be so I scared of, i don't like catfish yeah. well i was about to say i don't think i'd be so scared of seeing the ghost lady i'm more scared of like seeing a giant ass yeah catfish. i don't want to see the catfish when matt caught that catfish in blue ridge that time i how big was it it was not big. It, was it, like, it, it came up like to the like mid thigh on me geez. when it was up. Yeah. And Matt's like, so like 15, he's so pounds. proud. And I'm just like. I, I mean, that's a good size. Catfish. I didn't expect yeah. like the white, like prehistoric eyeballs. Yeah. They're monsters. Yeah. I don't want. I, yeah, and people, like, yeah. Catfish so, is scary. I love to fish and I don't, I don't particularly like catfishing fishing because it's pretty boring. Yeah. yeah. But we go sometimes and they're just, they're this giant bottom feeding prehistoric monster that, yeah. uh, well, I just throw them back. Because I don't, yeah. again, I don't yeah. eat catfish, so mm-hmm. to me, I catch and release everything. Yeah. But they're they're big and heavy, and I mean, you're talking some of the rivers around Georgia, they pull up 80, 90, 100 pound catfish pretty regularly. Yeah. So, And you're talking about a lake that has basically infinite food, has depths and hidey holes And dead everywhere. people. Yeah, I mean, and everywhere. a lot of dead people to eat. There's yeah. a lot of decayed stuff down there to eat. No, no, no. I just say it about Have my life. Have you ever seen them open like... Like a couple of centuries old casket and seeing what was left in the no, coffin. No, I don't want to. It's it's sludge. Yeah. yeah, it's sludge in the shape of people. Yeah, which is it's interesting. Horrific. This is why I want to be cremated. It's like a soup. I don't want to. I don't Primordial want soup. To, yeah, I don't want to be like. Out. I don't. I just don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to be. There. I don't want to be sludge. Uh, Viking funeral me on Lake Lanier. Let's add one more to it just for yeah. time's sake. Yeah, they see this fire going by. Just, 
<laughs> and Celine Dion plays. Well, talking about like old school, like Southern stuff. There's a nut. There's um. There, they say there's numerous kinds of apparitions out there in Lake Lanier that you see. And if you've got a lot of dead people di- like dead people out there, I would not be surprised that there's a lot of sightings of ghosts. Now, do declare you don't want to stir up them haints, I tell you what. <laughs> but there is a report of a mysterious float seen floating on the lake, um, oh, lake yeah, late at yeah. night. Um, and its inhabitant is a shadowy figure pushing it, the float or the raft along with a pole, and all you can see is a lantern. So, and, and this is where it's 45 feet deep. There's nothing to push off. And here's what I say when I heard that story, when I read about that. Everybody says it's either a float or a raft. That's a ferry. What yeah. they're describing is how they used to ferry rivers. Yeah. Exactly. It was the old ferryman. Yeah. And it's it, a ferryman. Yeah. So they, I mean, the Throw claims. Throw some coins. Yeah. Call it a good day. Bye. But, I mean, part of the sightings say that you it, like you can watch it, but it'll disappear and, and then, then reappear, reappear and then disappear and reappear. So it's really mm-hmm. creepy. Um, one of the stories is about two fishermen who claimed to have seen it about 1 a.m. on a cold autumn night. The raft was spotted in a section that is known to be roughly 45 feet deep. Mm-hmm. and um, But it had no difficulties maneuvering through the water. With right. Pole. Even though it couldn't. Yeah. And, and for those of you who aren't familiar with fishing, that is the key time to go fishing. Um, it's quiet. The fish come out at dawn and dusk. Yeah. And they're, they're most active. Some of the fish you'd want to catch in those early morning hours. Well, the fisherman reported that they watched the figure traveling, and suddenly he started. The figure started shouting, jumping from the raft into the freezing river. Um, they That's were aggressive. yeah, they were afraid something was coming for them, so they pulled their lines out and prepared to leave the area. But when they shined their lights across the river, there was no sign of the raft or the figure, and the dark surface of the lake was calm and undisturbed, as if it had never been interrupted. Mm-hmm. I like how they weren't going to go help the dude. They're like, yeah. we got to get the fuck out. We got to get the fuck out. I mean, uh, whatever's chasing that guy is probably <laughs> after us next. <laughs> yeah. Good luck, guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but you there all... was fairies that existed there. Like, that's the, how they. They're describing a fairy. Yeah, that's how they navigated. They had lamps. The river. They had a pole. It was yeah. a big flat. Go read Mark Twain. That's how they got well, around. Well, that's true. Like, there was a lot of reports that in um, underwater, you do see these fairies that used to ferry people across mm-hmm. these rivers. They because... just left them there to rot. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, the the areas themselves were cut by the Chattahoochee. So you would have to use a raft or a ferry of some sort mm-hmm. to kind of maneuver yourself through yeah. the different communities in that area. Mm-hmm. So Now, for our, our more pagan listeners or, or in tune with nature, when you think about the fact that Georgia was is full of natural winding rivers and a lot of these rivers were swept into this lake, I mean, think about the, the river spirits. Yeah. I'm sure they're angry, too. Their river's gone. Yeah. Also, underwater rivers. Like, the rivers don't just go away because yeah. there's a lake on they top of them. They just flow differently. Yeah. yeah. So they, when you think about the currents, you also have all these rivers under there moving around. Yeah. No, something that was man-made that wasn't naturally, like, able yeah. to be followed. It's different when you're, like, in the ocean and you know the, how the current kind of works being in the ocean because it's a natural current. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you've taken several different winding paths of the Chattahoochee and kind of combine them together to create this thing. Yeah. I mean, if you ever... I hate to compare this to Minecraft, but you, whenever you try to make something like a lake or like a little thing in Minecraft, it's like... the How do you make it in your baggie? Just show my hands like <laughs> How the fuck do you get cubes of water? How does that work? What do you mean? I don't play Minecraft, so how does that work? Oh, you get a little bucket and you pour water in it. But my uh, point being is that when you play it, the currents are doing different stuff until you settle it out. Until you settle it, yeah. Yeah, because you've added something that wasn't there to begin with. And I, you've probably seen the videos of like the underwater rivers in the ocean and the underwater waterfalls. Yes. So it's not that out there. Yeah, to, it happens all the time. Yeah. Again, you, people don't think about it, but riptides in the ocean are a real thing. They come up sometimes out of the blue, and they drag people out to sea and drown them. Yeah. Yep. Like you, it doesn't matter how strong a swimmer you yeah. are. And there you are rip tides and it. rivers too. Yeah. yeah. Some rivers we don't get in there. That's got a high current. Yeah. yeah. Well, then I, that's my thing is you add not only the fact that this is man made, and then other shit under it. You are just setting yourself up for mm-hmm. some first fatalities to happen. Fatality. So there's been a lot of stories about Lake Finishing. Guineer and how scary it is. I will. I never went to Lake Lanier before. I heard this. I will never go to Lake Lanier ever. Oh, come on, it'll be fun. No, thank you. Well, how I, about we, how about we go? We go on the lake. We just like do ghost shit. I, that's what my wife was like. Let's go do ghost stories on the Lake Lanier. See, I want to. I see. I, I would really be down for that. I don't want to be on the lake. I'm okay with us going up there to camp. Yeah. I don't want to dick around on that water. No, no. Like, no. Because mm-hmm. I mean, there are so many people every year that die. Yeah. And it's like, 
Why you do think, people keep showing up? You here? think the ghosts would get mad if it peed in the lake? Well, wasn't like Escher's son killed, like stepson killed? He, yeah, I mean, these are known people who like died. Like, it's not like it doesn't matter if you're famous or not. Yeah, the, the currents don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, that's what I'm saying. It's like it's not like you just get one or two people a year who end up dying. 20, it's, it's a lot. Twenty a year, which yeah. is a high number to drown in any lake anywhere. Yeah, but much less one lake in Georgia. And it's a pretty big lake. I'm not going to lie. I've got family that live up there on it. Oh, yeah. And I don't go up to their house. We go do things up there, but I don't get on their boat. Well, just to put in perspective. I'm just not going to do it. Well, I was going to say, to put in perspective, the federal government pretty much handles any sort of, like, patrolling of this lake. It's not because of the fact that it is, like, covering, like, five different counties and is, like, was created by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. It's not even, like, something that can, like, you can go West Point Lake, and it's only that county that really kind of patrols it. Yeah. Not here. We It's a federal, it's federally preserved, so. Well, it's so dumb that, and because it makes so much money for those areas, they refuse to, like, stop boating and fishing and stuff. And they'll just, like, the 4th of July this year. Oh, yeah. There are going to be five deaths on Lake Lanier. Because yeah, there's minimum. always five or ten on yeah. the 4th of July, because there's so many boats out there. They hit each other, yep. and they hit underwater structures, and people drown. And it happens every yep. year. And we used to have a, uh, I used to work for a company, and we had a company like picnic up on Lake Lanier every year, where basically the owner would bring in a semi-truck of beer and a semi-truck of steaks, and we'd stay a weekend up there and just get plastered Blast. and yeah. eat a bunch of good meat. But he also would bring up like two or three boats and 10 or 12 jet skis. And every year we left four to five like between the jet skis and boats underwater because they would they just get crashed. There's no way to go get them, so they're just under there. Yeah, and that was it. Like, and this guy had infinite money, but we knew going out there, like, okay, we're gonna crash two boats and three jet skis. Oh yeah, this they, year. there's that's just know, what it is. You watch like, the YouTube mm-hmm. videos, you see sunken boats, absolutely, you see all kinds of stuff under there that they can't get to. I would guess this guy's probably lost like 20 boats out there over the past oh. 10 years, like mm. legit. Mm. And it's just he knows going in, he's gonna lose forty thousand dollars worth of watercraft and it's just like okay mm-hmm. rather than insurance we, we briefly it, talked yeah. about um lake linear when we were doing our like bermuda triangle episode because those triangles exist in a lot of places yeah. and lake linear it's one of them some people just go away yeah like well they're still down there mm-hmm. again just and waiting. i wonder well and that's the thing is when you talk to the people that or you watch the videos from the guys that scuba dive it they flat out tell you like yeah there's a lot of bodies down there Probably more than the 27 they say are under there because they run into them really consistently. Well, it's all like, yeah, you have to think about reported bodies. Think yeah. about people who are just dumping bodies. Well, yeah. Oh, God. And if you've ever seen stuff underwater, it's not, it may eventually float to the surface, but if it hits one thing, it's just stuck it changes there. trajectory. Yeah, it's, well, that it's or, stuck. Again, if it gets... Or like your clothes get snagged on something. Just like the people that drown, if it's if they hit one of those underwater current, it drags it yeah. under some sticks. And you're probably or, in a tree branch. Yeah. Into a building yeah. or a barn or yeah. underneath the ferry, it's yeah. just under that until just... forever. Like, yeah, there's no coming out. Yeah, yeah, I mean, think about how long it took them to find that car. Yeah, for that woman, fifty for years, nearly fifty years, and they knew where it was at. Yeah, they knew kind <laughs> of where it was at, but they had to dredge the lake to get to it because yeah. it was under so much debris. So mm. yeah, this is a. I mean, they didn't find the first, bo- uh, the second body for a year. <coughs> Still and this was no, it was is that they yeah. they're kind of think assume. it's her, yeah. And this was when it was new, like this was a mm-hmm. year after they opened the lake, yeah. Like it wasn't full of as much stuff as it is now. It was still full of crap because there's all that crap down there. I feel yeah. like they saw something on the bridge and she swerved to avoid it. Probably. Like, maybe the lady of the lake, the one on the bridge, is not the one we think it is. Maybe she was hammered. She's I mean, like, yeah. people get drunk and wreck, and this was the 50s. People used to really yeah. drink and drive a lot. Yeah, like literally drinking. And they're going yeah. to drive. <laughs> when I was a kid, my dad would do the same thing. We'd Absolutely. be in his truck, and he used to drink, like, backroads country, and this was backroads country then. That's so, what I'm saying. Like, she yeah. could have just been hammered, drunk, and just wrecked. Like, yeah. so my there's thing no way to is, know. <laughs> gas is so cheap back then. Why would you fucking run with the gas station? Dine and dash in the roadhouse. Because your, well, your tats can be way more expensive than your fucking gases back then. Gas is what, 25 cents, if that, a ga- gallon? They fucking were probably go going dad. to these roadhouses to get guys to buy them drinks and stuff like that. Like, that, there's a whole, you know, that was the only, t- there was only one mention of that happening. It was more so talking about how they just lost control in the middle yeah, of this bridge. They may not have even been in a roadhouse drinking. They may have been just driving down the road. They were driving to the roadhouse. Sixer. Yeah. Right. And they may have been pre-gaming. Yeah. Like, I mean, 
it was not unheard of to get real drunk and drive back then. So it, it was crazy though yeah. because like when the first report came out of this car being located, like the the kids of this woman were like, "I think that's our mom." Like we have for a long time they didn't know like. There was reports that they had gone missing and that they had gone off the bridge, but because they never located the car or any of the bodies, they thought maybe she had like dipped out and gone to yeah. like dipped out and gone. And they were like, "Nope, oh, we think that this is our mom who went missing in the fort like in the fifties." It's Jeez. it's sad too because it's like, you know, you don't never you will never know what happened. It's the same for a lot of these stories where women go people go missing until they find their bodies Body. in a, yeah. like in underwater mm-hmm. in a car. And the thing about Oscarville is that um, there was a, there's a map online and it, it pegs the people who've gone missing drownings, and a lot of them are over. <laughs> <it pegs them>. <laughs> 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 but the, a lot of it is over Oscarville, and that's why you hear it come up a lot because yeah. of the excessive violence when it was still a community, <laughs> and now the violence that happens literally Afterwards. still in the community. Yeah. So maybe it's these angry. The people, water's like, gone bad. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's also in a part of Atlanta that was still segregated yeah. in 1984. Yeah. In 87, that's when they had the uh, a march for freedom in 87. Like, come on. Yeah. It's, it's wild. It's still going on. It's just the National Guard had to be called out and that they were still like, you know, um you know, go home inward and, you know, get the fuck out of here. Is that when Carter was president? No, that's by Reagan. Yeah. That's yeah. Reagan. Reagan. I was about to say I hope this episode has taught you all why you don't go to Lake Lanier. That was the whole point. And I'm not saying there aren't plenty of recreational lakes in Georgia that you can go to and enjoy. West Point, yeah. Lake Horton, Alatuna. You can go to the Lake Altam- Peachtree. Altama- yeah. Nah. Go to the ah, Altamaha okay. River Basin. The uh, Blue Ridge has a river. The Suwannee, the Blue yeah. Ridge has Cocoa a river. Lake, Lake, river. Lake, Blue, river. Bl- Lake, Lake Blue, Blue Ridge. Ridge is gorgeous. It is. There are plenty of places if you want to come to Georgia and go fishing and camping and recreate. Just don't do it on Lanier. Yeah. yeah. Like the rest of them Plus are Plus there's either... a shit ton of people. Why uh, would you even want to? Well, and you look at it like West Point was designed and West Point's another one where they basically flooded the basin and combined a mm-hmm. bunch of other things together. But they did it while removing the you, they took everything out. They did it the right yeah. way. Yeah. They did it because they wanted to encourage fishing and they did it the way it was supposed to be done. Yeah. So you yeah. don't hear about this out there. Now, the people out there have messed up West Point Lake, so if you go there, you're going to see a lot of trash. Yeah, well, that's that's human beings. Yes, yeah, but it isn't floating up from yeah, the city. It's not dead <laughs> yeah, bodies we, floating I mean, to yeah. the surface. Our boat caught on fire one year when we went to West <laughs> Really? Point. That's fucking right cool. In the of the, in the lake. Yeah, but that's yeah. because we hit debris and it got caught up in uh, the propeller. Yeah, in the prop. Yeah. But yeah. like, and tree branch. Tr- like it tree was a tree. Yeah. yeah. I love being outdoors. I love being on the water. I do not go to Lake Lanier. Like, no, we love going boating and yeah. all that stuff and, like, hanging out. We will not go near Lake Lanier. It's no. West Point or bus. I suggested it once, and we were like, no. Blue Ridge is, and it's confusing because it's not something you normally see in Georgia, but there are parts of Blue Ridge, Lake Blue Ridge, where you can stand on the bank, and the water is, like, Caribbean cl- crystal clear. Yeah, and you yeah. can see it, to the bottom, and it's 20 feet it's deep. It's so and you're like, blue. It's beautiful. Yeah. And that place, and no yeah. one's over there. Yeah. It's a place you can go where you might see one fisherman on the whole lake, yeah. and it's just you. I had chartered that fishing trip. I mean, I canceled it for the railroad ride, but I'm going to do that for oh, the years out. So We're going to go. Mm-hmm. Like we used to go camping up there when I was a yeah. kid. Me There's and my dad, my brother. Choo choo train up there. Up at yeah, Bridge, yeah. Old, railway. Yeah. Choo choo train. An old one. Take you up to McKaysville. Let you do some shopping. I'm going to fucking bring my Tom the Tank Engine and my conductor outfit and go ham. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I had to work that weekend. It sucked. We had an open I car, saw. so we were drinking cider and enjoying like the nice. Yeah. It was fucking cold. Cause it was it's cold. like fifty eight degrees. Yeah, it that's was what. <laughs> Casey was like, "You want to go get on the open car with him?" I'm like, "Not a chance in hell. It's forty it, degrees outside." It actually cold. was supposed to be ninety, and then suddenly it's like, yeah. "Hey, bitches!" It's like we're gonna be sixty. That's yeah. Georgia. All yeah. my friends were like, "Juggle uh, tubing." I'm like, "It was sixty five mm, degrees so high. The water was at no. forty one degrees." I'm like, I "Getting think it." We saw like two tubers the entire yeah. time, and they were just like, oh, "My wiener would have been inverted." No, thank you. It would turn into a pussy. Wow. Huh. All right. Well, that was fun. Okay. Uh, but that's how. Never be Bobby talked about buttholes. Bussies. And bussies at the very Apparently end. Apparently, I'm talking about pegging. So. Yeah. I mean, you can peg a bussy. Yeah. I'm trying to extol the I beautiful natural it. resources Georgia has that just aren't Lake Lanier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you ever come to Georgia, there's so much mm-hmm. great things you can do recreationally that you don't have to go to Lake Lanier just, ever. You know what? Just don't. Oh. It's unnecessary. No. I live yeah. here and I don't go there. Nobody goes there unless you're like crazy. Nope. Unless you're trap. super no. rich and have a family from out of town. Yeah. That's kind of it. 
Yeah. Or like, you're a drunk hillbilly. It's like the <laughs> vortex. You only go there if you're a tourist. Mm-hmm. I like the vortex, I don't. though. So I here's don't. the thing. It's okay to go every now and again because they do have decent burgers. Yeah. And yeah. they have tots and a cheese sauce. That jalapeno cheese oh sauce God, is bananas yeah. good. But it's not somewhere I'm going to be like, ooh, let's go to the Vortex today. Yeah. It's going to be yeah. like once every four or five months. I'm be like, you know what? Let's yeah. just take a trip up to Midtown. Yeah. And let's go to Jumpman's Daughter and eat a Vortex. Yeah. And the problem yeah. is like traffic and all that stuff. It's like, I don't want to drive no, through all of that bullshit yeah. trying to find parking. Uh, I don't even go to the Little Five one anymore. I go to the Midtown mm-hmm. Vortex because it's just easier. And because Little Five isn't, it's not the same as it was when I was younger and we used to go. No, it's really it's so yuppie now. It's super hipstery and yuppie yeah. and everything's god awful expensive. Yeah. And it's like, what? This was not this. What is it? Gentrification. You know, place will let you park yeah. there. Like, um, we're checking receipts. Uh, we still park behind the fence because there's a hole in the fence. Oh. Just walk through it. Sup, bitches. I and mean, we've been doing that since I was in high school. Or you park in one of the neighborhoods around the corner. The, the same yeah. hole has been in the same fence for 40 years, and we just walk through it. That's funny. If you ever need a recommendation of places to go in Georgia, we could also do an episode on that. Uh, I'm down. I go, I, we travel a lot, and I try a lot of everything because I want to see. Everywhere that's cool in the state. Like, that's that's one of my goals. I want to be where the people are. Well, Jesus no. Christ. No. Get well, out. That's, a lot of people don't go see the things around where they live. And mm-hmm. I really enjoy doing yeah, that. Yeah, I do I too. like going to the weird little museums and trucks, like the weird little stops on yeah. the side of the road and like these cool. Just to see what they are. They have like these amazing um, like peach orchards all up and down central Georgia that make like yeah. their own ice cream and their own like yeah. peach bread. And you're like, I'm going to stop by this one and, and their see what's own up. cobbler. Yeah. Hey, listen, if you don't explore your sit- town, our state, we would have never even known about Corpsewood. True. Yeah. Like I mean, there that's are... so long forgotten at oh, this yeah, point. Oh, to go up there. It, yeah. I'm on board. And like Andersonville, like no one. I want to go so bad. No one goes. Like I took my wife down there and I mean, it's like a two hour ride, but it's a pretty two hour ride through like the country. Yeah. And like Mm -hmm. we were like one of three, one of three like couples there. That was it. And they were, the other two couples were well into their 90s. Yeah, we, uh. (laughs) I'm pretty sure one of them was like a prisoner there. And he's like, oh, the old days. Me and Angie would go to Fort Jackson and Fort Pulaski when we were in Savannah because it's just history. Yeah. It's like. Fort Pulaski's cool as shit. It's really cool. And I just, I like history. So yeah, we, we both like going to these like historical places. We're going to go to Fort Mountain. Yeah. Hey. I'm looking at you. Hey. Oh, hey. 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 Becky, where can they find us? Not on Lake Lanier. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Facts. But you can find us on Pornhub. Facebook. Not on Pornhub. At the free Facebook you at porn. the Free Rotation Podcast. You can find us on Twitter. Only fans. The free fr- Why do you got to be like this? Red tube. T- mm-hmm. I like it. Just go listen to the rest of our episodes where I tell you where we are. We're <laughs> milkhunters.com. <laughs> Brazzers. Mommy milkers. Daddy's cummies. Yeah, you oh. didn't hold your promise that weekend at all. Because you started talking about it and I just wanted to imitate you. That's not how that works when you say you're not going to say something. It doesn't matter what she says. I had to say it. Remember? It was great. That it was, was like hilarious. that fucking joke he kept saying at Dragon Fine. Con and no one. Ligma? Was, wait, it was wait, not wait. Funny. It was not funny. Wait, what is the name? Oh, God. Those guys that sing the song Thunder. The, one, well, the thunder, know. lightning, and lightning. the thunder. Thun- imagine, um, imagine dragons. Imagine dragging these nuts on your face. Oh! God damn it. I helped you. I helped you. Come on, Becky. You should have just said muse hey. and stared at her hey. hard. Becky, for fuck's sake, fist bump me. Oh, fist she, she got me with that on Valorant. It was uh, glorious. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Okay, Chris is like, imagine you were another one. You're like, I don't fucking know. I like, don't give a shit. <laughs> Chris is so like, I just don't give a shit. I'm like, fuck, just say it, Chris. <laughs> See you.